today going to speak to you about how uh, digital phenotyping helps seed breeders uh, from our experience at Hyphen. Yes, we, we are going to really give you a full tour of what we um, what we really uh, learned over the last few years and in, 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 um, hearing from the, the feedback from our partners as well about how we can, how phenotyping um, helps uh, breeders and, and what are really the best practices today, how, how it all evolved um, over the last few years, like the, the technology evolved very fast and the methods as well, so we'll, uh, we'll uh, cover that uh, in today's uh, discussion. Um, so we really were to, to introduce Hyphen in, in, in a couple of worlds. At Hyphen, we, uh, we've been working for the last few years, since 2014, um, on, on uh, finding out all the best applications of uh, um, high school boot phenotyping in, in, in the field. And uh, nowadays, we are being more and more challenged to, uh, to deploy phenotyping in, um, in greenhouses or, or uh, uh, facilities indoor, basically, to, um, to really make the, deliver the, the highest value possible from, uh, from the, the, the sensors and the devices we use to measure the plants. So, so we use um, devices ranging from, from satellites to drones and, uh, and rovers and phenomobiles, IoTs and even smartphones and, and other handheld devices to measure the plants. We gained a lot of experience in that, and, and today we'll share um, our experience with, with breeders um, to date. So, so let's get on going. So uh, basically, breeders are using, at least in the field, the high throughput from typing and a huge variety of trails that are really, really dif different. And the question is what they use on all those trails? How do they use it? Is it always the same? So uh, maybe I will start by two slides <laughs> trying to summarize what the breeders are trying to do with all those breeding trails. And then uh, we'll see uh, all the different elements where high throughput phenotyping can help. So let's say that a typical old fashioned breeding trail really starts by having a lot of crosses and nurseries where you are um, trying some new crosses and some new cultivars uh, where uh, progressively uh, you ditch, you, you throw to the garbage uh, most of those uh, of those nines, and you go into uh, yield what we call field trails or yield trails. So really, from nurseries to yield trails, until you're having um, couples of cultivars that should be commercialized, and there we're more in the logic of what I call product, product evaluation and certifica uh, certification which is basically the same thing as a chemical product. And that was the previous webinar we made where you're more than welcome to go and watch it again. So, so basically, in a typical breeding program, you're having two really wide, widely different types of uh, breeding um, trails, which are nurseries and field trails. What happens lately, and that created a huge um, uh, willingness for breeders to work on a high throughput for typing is what we call the genomic production. So genomic production uh, created a brand new set of trails where the idea was to have some crosses that will never make uh, elite lines or lines that will be commercialized <laughs> that allows you to, to train your model. And, and often into those uh, trolls, yield is not really relevant because you don't have enough seeds. It's not, um, it's not at the right level of a green program. And so this is a little bit how it works. Huh? You're having your training pro pro uh, population, you have genotyping and phenotyping. And, and what it helps you do, it helps you do a kind of model where you don't have to phenotype uh, your crosses uh, to be able to know if your crosses are good or not. And, and this can give you a lot of information about uh, trying to be much more creative on how you're going to do your crosses between the elites, your pool population, uh, through time and through your different uh, crosses. And, and that's where I believe in the training population, high throughput phenotyping is the most relevant. Uh, generally, in genomic prediction uh, bring trials, uh, there's no yield or yield is not really relevant. And, and this is really, I think, the key thing uh, we want to insist is uh, from a high fence so or from a phenotyping perspective, and now not from a green perspective, we can split the types of trolls into two big categories. The category where, for any reason, uh, yield is not achievable or not desired. So there we can think of nurseries and, and uh, genomic prediction specific trolls. 
and uh, all the other um, trails where yield is going to be harvested. And, and um, basically what happens is when uh, yield is not achievable, what you want to understand is you want to understand what type of yield you would have. And we're going to see some concrete example uh, lately. And you want to predict, to predict how it's going to behave uh, what is going to be the yield? So, what's the pot genetic potential of your uh, of your cross? But also, uh, how it will behave in different environments. This is what we're going to see right now. The other hand is, of course, in yield trials. <laughs> Basically, uh, what is really of interest for you is the yield. All the rest has uh, way less value, and so all the game of high throughput phenotyping is how. Can I assess the quality of my yield? Is my trail good or not? And can I correct eventually, in some cases, uh, the yield? We'll see that it doesn't work all, all, all the time, but it can really help uh, sometimes. So uh, let's get on going. So some concrete examples in our nurseries or genomic prediction trails on which we, we worked. Um, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, so same slide. Um, so basically, uh, in those in those types of trolls, uh, you have just one line. So here we can see uh, wheat and sunflower. You have very little uh, plants, and so you need a lot of resolution. And uh, you're going to want to have some traits, uh, being able to describe how your different crosses, how your different plants are uh, behaving. And uh, an example that we did is uh, assessing the phenological stage. So is my cultivar, is my cross, uh, early and 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 has uh, flowers very quickly or on the contrary is it more um, is it more late it, does it uh, has uh, slower in growing and the phenological stage and so this is what we routinely do for a lot of our customers is to assess the phenological stage at one stage to say if it's more early or late cultivars uh, you're having in your greenhouses uh, an example on sunflower uh, we did in Toulouse. Um, another example is disease. <laughs> so uh, I just want to know if my um, my cultivar is uh, sensitive or not to hear its sugar beet and sarcospora. And so um, the, the, the question is um, how sensitive is my my cross to uh, to this disease? And and this is also something we can do routinely in a really uh, high throughput way. A hyphen, and we did in the ICAR project. Um, finally, uh, you're having some other questions, like, for instance, uh, vigor, early vigor. So early vigor can be uh, a desired or undesired trait, <laughs> depending on, on your situation. Uh, generally, when you have a lot of water, early vigor is highly desired, especially to fight against weeds. When you're having growth issues, uh, in order to save whether sometimes early vigor is not that desired, uh, but it's a choice. And this also, you can you can follow it up uh, with the drones in a really, really uh, high throughput way that human beings are not able to do. Um, and so to synthesize, I, I try to give you three examples of what you can do. So what would be the intermediate traits uh, you would have to better understand your crops, phenological stage detections, disease detection, early vigor, but um, it's limitless. <laughs> we can imagine a lot of other traits, and we do actually a lot of other traits, some of them under NDA, uh, other not. And please don't hesitate to ask us questions on the traits you need, on the crops you need, and we will uh, assess with you the capacity we have to do it in order to better predict how your crosses and your cultivars are going to behave. Final things is to go further than that. What you want is to predict how it's going to uh, behave in different environments. So for that, there's a lot of uh, research, academical research working with crop models. It's great. Um, it's not necessarily uh, directly actionable or, or it's a lot of work to be able to make those crop models work. Uh, we came up with this idea of agroclimatic traits where actually we use, uh, we are able to create for you uh, intermediate uh, traits between a, a complete crop model and uh, basic traits. Uh, by example, uh, so, so how do we do that? We do that by combining uh, the traits of a phenotype we see at one moment uh, by uh, the weather data. The, the most simple example we can give is 
uh, if you're at different phenological stage, what you want to know is actually the amount of degree days uh, that is needed uh, for one of your cultivar to achieve uh, such um, phenological stage. So you don't want to have a number of days, day of year, but you want to have a number of degree days. We can go way further. We made some webinars there where we, we can um, uh, assess also transpiration. So how much would my, my crop I should have transpired? How much did it transpire depending on the green fraction and, and other things? And so you can this way in those types of uh, genomic prediction trials, assess if um, it, it has transpired more, but you can also work with Q power, with nitrogen, uh, use efficiency, etc. So there, uh, the scale is a little bit your limit and uh, today's knowledge in uh, agronomy, but we're very, very happy to discuss about how we can combine uh, pedoclimatic data with the straits to make more sense, because otherwise you will have rankings that are different in different environments and you will not understand why. And that's really one of the things we do at Hyphen is to understand why with you and to give you the accurate agroclimatic traits uh, linked to it. The second thing uh, that we will, uh, the second thing that we we want to mention there, and it's something that we're starting to see, uh, but, but it's still <laughs> under debate, is this notion of reverse phenomic. So um, we believe, and, and some of our customers as well, that uh, probably uh, tomorrow it will be really, I mean, most of the things that are being done on greenhouse today uh, could be done uh, in the field tomorrow, or even tomorrow in 2022 even. Uh, why? Because the, the level of high throughput phone typing has so much increased in the field that you can have all those agroclimatic traits, all those traits I, I already uh, showed you. And so it would allow you to, to it's cheaper <laughs> to send 10,000 lines in the field than to uh, screen 10,000 lines in greenhouses. And so uh, it's really about volumes and quality of the data. I don't think we will never be able to match greenhouses, but for sure we can have more volume with accurate data. And, and, and this is something that should allow you to make reverse phenomics by just pinpointing the, the specific genetics you want to study in greenhouses for more academical reasons or, or function, functional reasons and um, massively test uh, your crosses and, and your genomic prediction models uh, in the field, the, the, at least your training data set. Once again, those genomic prediction models, all the game is to sample the, the space of the possibilities, which are huge. And so more you're having of uh, data points and better it is. And, and this is really something where Hyphen can help on the phenotyping side. Yeah, so, so that's about it for this type of trials. Now we're going to go into the field trials uh, and Joss is going to enlighten us on what we can do to correct yield. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Alexis. So, so we've um, we've now jumped into the the, the 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 side where we have uh, trials for which we really highly care about yield, and this is uh, let let's say um, the, the the main metric that, that is of interest to us. Here, the the, the two uh, messages is that we we there are two things that uh, that we we have gained a lot of experience on over the last years. Well, one is around the quality of of the the trial. And uh, how can I basically trust the, the out output that I see from, from my trial? Uh, should I uh, dismiss my trial or not? How can I know that, that I'll get the most value from, from it? So th this is one thing that we'll, uh, we'll talk about. And the other is how can I correct uh, my yield estimate um, and, and, and ensure that, that we also get the, the most value from these corrections? And, and what we'll um, talk about is the fact that we can assess uh, all of that at the trial level or at the plot level. So to, to give you an example uh, of what, what that looks like, um, at the trial level, uh, this is something that, that you could um, end up with. Th these are examples that, that we've seen in the past, where um, years ago, when uh, you'd have a case like this, where you, um, you, you, you'd be uh, impacted by uh, clauses in this case, uh, you'd end up with a trial uh, in, the, in a situation like this, traditionally, years ago, you would have uh, probably said, okay, I'm going to ditch entirely my trial. I cannot trust the results um, I'll get from, uh, from my trial because there's no way for me to, to, uh, to make sense of it. Um, 
and that actually has changed a lot uh, over the the, the last uh, the last few years and uh, and this is really because we are able to work at the plot level uh, this this really made a, a big difference and the the way we found to to give you the best illustration for it is to look at this case where the field the trial is infested by weeds uh, the cool thing by working at the plot level is that you can put some uh, some of them in in quarantine uh, so the the plots largely infested by weeds can be quarantined and uh, and disregard this uh, discarded from the the trial and when we actually did this exercise on this uh, particular case we actually ended up with uh, more than 85 or uh, 85 percent of the plots here that are actually usable uh, and that i can uh, keep um, uh, examining and, and working on to to get the my, my results so the situation initially looks pretty bad when you look at the the the, the, the trial level but when you start to dig into each plot uh, a lot can be done uh, despite the, the weed infestation um, and so the, this is something we do at hyphen routinely uh, and and we do that every year with data coming and flowing from uh, uh, countries all over the world uh, and we face every year cases where, uh, like in the, the bottom right corner, everything seems fine. Uh, we've got a, a good uh, good trial uh, with, uh, with, uh, with everything looking, looking fine. All the way to cases on the extreme left where uh, it's actually looking pretty bad. But in the, even in that case, uh, as mentioned, we can, we can extract value from, from the trial. And interestingly, in the middle, we, we try to give you examples where we have some plots highlighted uh, not only in in green or, or red uh, but also in orange um, so the the this not this this is quite important because it really highlights what what is important to us at hyphen is to really uh, dive into these kind of uh, uh, special cases where it's not uh, either good or bad but it might be um, uh, somewhere in the middle and uh, and being able to give you uh, the right indication for it the, the right metric that allows you to to really sense that so we do that in, in routine uh, every year. And the other thing uh, we do, other than um, working at the trial level uh, and, and assessing the quality of the trial, uh, is to think about how can I correct uh, my tri trial uh, using yield. So traditionally, um, th this uh, used to be done uh, by uh, looking at the special effect that I see in my trial. And uh, this is something that we would do at the end uh, of the, the campaign when, when we actually have harvested and, and have the, the yield data available to, to us. Uh, we use some um, um, scientific method that allow us to, to basically normalize my yield based on the special effect I see um, in, in, the, in the trial. And the important thing to, to know is that the, this is really something that, um, that, that there's a lot of work actually go, going on these days in the scientific community to to um, to basically uh, switch to to uh, give the possibility to correct the yield based on traits that we acquire during the campaign. So so here the idea is not to wait until yield is available, uh, but also correct it during the um, during the campaign as we collect traits. And this is something that is um, I wouldn't say controversial. Maybe it's not the term, but not everyone agrees with this principle. And this is work in progress from the scientific community to show that. This kind of correction can happen with um, traits other than, than yield. But traditionally, this is really the way um, it, it, it would be done. And what we actually realized uh, is that you don't have to wait uh, until uh, until harvest, until you have the yield um, to do correction, such correction. So, so the, here in this case, we, um, we have two uh, sorghum uh, plots uh, available to us where we see that one is uh, fully harvestable, uh, and the, the other, uh, we, we can see that there is a hole uh, in it that, that means that only 79% of it is harvestable. And even in this case, um, we can normalize the yield based on the uh, on the surface that we have available in the plot. So even if we know that the, the plant um, here, the, this is something that is quite important to, to always bear in mind is that yield is really this kind of imperfect metric because the plant is going to compensate if we have a hole in the microplot, then uh, depending on the crop, and, and we know it's a case here with, with sorghum, that the plant can compensate the, the, the space available and uh, it doesn't necessarily, uh, it's, it's not a one-one uh, uh, relationship but here, but really the yield in this case can be uh, can be used in that sense to to uh, to to be uh, corrected and and, uh, and normalized. So uh, this is something that that we can do 
uh, as we show on the right here at the plant level. So if we have crops where we uh, we can we can base this kind of correction uh, on plant count, uh, so, so considering just the, the number of plants, or we can uh, work uh, at the canopy level uh, using uh, metrics like like F cover in this case, where we uh, we can correct it in that sense, and any kind of metrics that that basically um, uh, would be available to to normalize it. So so the the, the surface here can be uh, can be used to to normalize my my yield, and uh, the surface could be a number of plants, could be a, a canopy cover, uh, and, and so on. What is really important there to keep in mind is the plants tend to compensate. Uh, over the heterogeneity. So those types of corrections make only sense when we know there will be no co compensation or very small compensation by the plants. So sorghum, by example, uh, tillers and compensate a lot, lot. But when you have a big hole at harvest, uh, it means it didn't compensate on this hole. Uh, same thing here, what you can see on, on, on wheat, etc. So it's really about uh, how can I normalize uh, when I know how my plant is functioning and will it compensate or not for the, the problems it faced? So in, um, in, in summary, what we've seen is that uh, in the past, um, the, the assessment used to be done at the trial level. Uh, that was before. Now, now this is really um, in, a, uh, in a way stopped because we can work at the plot level. So, so high throughput phenotyping today is done at the plot level. Uh, and, and this is great because it delivers the accuracy that we, uh, we were not able to achieve in the past. So at the trial level, you have a, a low accuracy. And at the plot level, obviously, you, you really increase the, the value you, you, you generate from, from high throughput phenotyping. And the, the third and last uh, uh, point is really that with uh, the, these methods, you, you don't have to wait until harvest to actually extract value from, from your, um, your trials. You can take decisions way before uh, harvest. And this is really what we're going to uh, briefly uh, cover next. Uh, and, and, and to us, we really believe that this is the, the, really the added value that service providers like, like Hyphen can provide to, to breeders. Uh, we work routinely with uh, sensors uh, and devices that are uh, wide ranging from, uh, from satellites and, uh, and drones and film mobiles, as, as we've seen before. And this. Um, increase the complexity of the, 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 the data processing we can do. It increases the choice of traits we can do and uh, we can have an offer. And uh, it's really bundling everything in this kind of digitization um, world where we have to basically push all of this data and all, all the value from coming from these sensors into a, a common place that makes sense for breeders to, to extract um, the information and, uh, and really speed up the decision process. And uh, effectively, this is really what high school good phenotyping, to, we believe, is, is all about. It's, it's about uh, capturing information from sowing to harvest and being able to take decisions during the campaign and not wait until the end of the, the season is ready and, um, and the, the yield is available or, or other uh, traits are available at, at, after harvest. Uh, because for us, we, the feedback we often get from, from uh, breeders is that, well, it's most often, it's actually too late. Uh, we, we need the information way, way, uh, way ahead of time, so way ahead of uh, harvest. Um, so we, we basically have a, a, a web platform uh, that, that we believe is really important because it, it's a place where you centralize uh, all of the information, whether uh, whatever kind of device and sensor it's coming from, uh, and even if it's uh, other type of sources like weather data, uh, that would be the same. All of this data flows into one place, um, which in, in a Hyphen's case we call Cloverfield. Um, and in there, uh, you will have ways to uh, interact with your results uh, after each flight uh, is done, after each data acquisition is done. So you, it's also a place where you can upload new data, uh, download results, uh, inspect uh, your plots and trials in a lot of details. And this is very important because it gives uh, and empowers everyone in the organization to, to make fast decisions whether you're a manager and, and want to have um, a, a, a very fast, uh, quick glance at everything that is happening in your breeding program, for instance, you want to see every trial uh, where it's at and, and, uh, and don't have to uh, travel to it or, or don't have to wait for information to arrive to you. Uh, uh, for the manager, it's very important to have these, um, all, all of the data centralized, especially if you have trials spread all over the world, uh, that, that makes uh, perfect sense. 
for field technicians, it's also important to know uh, in uh, how I uh, should prioritize um, the uh, interve intervention uh, in, in the trials. For breeders, it uh, makes sense because this is really the place where you will find all, all of your traits uh, and ag agronomic value that will help you to, to make the decisions um, fast. And uh, it's also a way to, um, to exchange um, more um, seamlessly and, and uh, more in, in a more intelligent way with uh, any partners you might work with that, that help you if, if you outsource your trial management to a CRO, for instance, that, that would be a good way to interact with them uh, and, and, um, and be more effective at managing the trial. Um, the other uh, aspect of that, so the, in this platform, you will find uh, what we, uh, we call in here, the, the, uh, the analytics and the dashboards that really help you to digest information very fast and monitor the, the, what is going on in performance of, of the, the, the trial uh, throughout the season. So in, 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 this, um, uh, in this interactive report, you will basically have access to, um, to not, not only just the raw data, but we'll try to process it and help you digest it in a way that, that makes sense to you and, um, and it's customizable to some extent, so that you, you've got the right information at the right time during the campaign um, to really inspect uh, the crop, your lineages, and, and here we aggregate things. So, so you will uh, aggregate data, not at a, you, you won't have just the plot level, but you will have the data at the genotype level, you'll have the data at your modality level, uh, you'll have the data um, at uh, different trial level, and if you, if you have uh, experiments in different envi environments uh, within a country or globally, uh, you really have uh, powerful ways here to assess the information and, and take quick decisions. So, how can I get started? How can I get started? So, so the first thing I think to get started is to define uh, why do you want to do high throughput phenotyping? So, what types of trials are you uh, looking to have with phenotyping? I've listed four of them uh, on which we worked, but of course, uh, what are yours? And maybe they're not there. So, we listed nurseries, we listed uh, genomic prediction. Uh, types trials, we listed classical yield trials, wherever it's uh, uh, elite yield trials or advanced lines uh, trials or, or, or whatever is your terminology in your, in your company. I also listed those trials for QTL detections, which are a little bit different. Um, the main ones that are more for research or what we call the magic population for multi-parent advanced generation intercrosses. But, but of course, you can have also be parental lines uh, types of, uh, of trials. And, and there you know, we can list all the use cases that we described uh, so far. So uh, the trial quality, the plot quality, uh, correct for the yield, correct for uh, at which level, trial or, or, or plot level, um, because I believe in it, because I think it's relevant for my program. I mean, you all have different issues. And, and at the end, it's the same uh, traits we computed just for your use cases. Uh, do I want to explain the limiting factors? Do I want to explain uh, the yield components? For example, the number of wheat heads, the number of uh, plants, the number of organs, or, or, or whatever is relevant for you, uh, etc. And, and of course, please tell us if you see other use cases uh, for you on which you would like us to help. We'll be more than happy uh, to, to go further. And, and, and so once we said that, at Hyphen, we're having a kind of a four main um, product lines, which will uh, allow you to get started. Uh, whether it's drones and satellites with Phenoscale, whether it's fixed uh, Phenostation, what we call Phenostation, if you want to phenotype the harvest. So if you want to have the yield component about, I don't know, uh, fruits, uh, we do that a lot, by example, on grapes, uh, where you want to assess if the grapes are diseased or not. Uh, Phenomobile, so if you if we believe that drones is not enough for the very specific things uh, you're looking for, Phenomobiles have been, even for seed breeders, a great tool and, and worth selling some. Uh, and of course, um, uh, all of that in order to be able to answer to your specific topics, uh, well, we can do a little bit of what we call research or let's say development to adapt specifically to your, to, to your use cases. Um, to do that, we'll have a team, uh, we're 25 today and highly motivated. I've seen those questions, do we operate locally or, or, or globally? Uh, our business in France represents 30% of our turnover, more or less. So basically, we work a lot in Australia. Uh, we have uh, Lee West that is based in US, Virginia, 
on which you're more than welcome to reach him. Um, and um, we work also in Africa. So we work in four continents today. And I, and I think we're really a digital company able to help you and to support you all around the world. Uh, we'll always project based, so we will always uh, follow up <laughs> our contracts and you to make sure that we're able to give you uh, the maximum value. And uh, we're really looking at how to expand and how to give as much local support as we can, uh, either by traveling, either by having people uh, where our activity um, needs it. Last thing, uh, hyphen with 25 people is already seven different nationalities, uh, which should relieve the openness uh, we have and, and our will to work globally and to be a global company. Rooted, of course, in Avignon. Um, so uh, if I was you, the first thing is uh, I would ask myself all those questions, try to define a little bit the traits in order to be able to discuss with us, with you having kind of an idea of what your outputs and how you will define it as a success. We will come to advise you on which type of drones, which types of sensors, which type of, uh, of everything. Um, and then we get started on the project. So uh, uh, we give you guidelines. Uh, we do believe that you should internalize as much as possible of this high throughput phenotyping process. So probably you need to internalize the hardware. Uh, we can see how uh, some of the data processing can be done at your place, etc. And then you get your, your results to start analytics and to start to really create value because high throughput phenotyping uh, was trendy a couple of years ago. Today, it it gives value to some of our customers and it gives need to give value to all of you. And that's really what we're committed for. And that's why we wake up at Hyphen every day with a huge smile is to give value to you. Uh, I think we're, we're there. So really, I mean, the message, and I hope that's what we managed to convey in those 33 minutes is that um, we are reaching a real maturity with high throughput phone typing. It's less and less research. It's more and more applied. It's more and more business uh, driven uh, use cases. And we're here to, to create value and to really be the link on making sure that your digitization process is a success and that you're thriving towards uh, more value, uh, more money and more profitable operations. 